Elliot Hurst, probably not as famous as he should be. Elliot Sanford Hurst, born on July 7th, 1932 in New York. He was a New York State chess champion in 1950 and became one of the best U.S. players in the 50s. He co-wrote with John Knott the book Blindfold Chess, History, Psychology, Techniques, Champions, World Records, and Important Games. And that book won the Fred Kramer Award for Best Chess Book of 2009, sponsored by the U.S. Chess Federation and other organizations, Chess Journalists of America, U.S. Chess Trust. And the book was also finalist for the English Chess Federation's Book of the Year in that same year, 2009. Hurst has a Ph.D. in psychology from Columbia University conferred in 1956. He was a distinguished professor emeritus at Indiana University, and he was an adjunct professor of psychology at uh, the University of Arizona. Smart guy, Elliot Hurst. The rating at the time of this game by Hurst was 2298, and by the time this game was played, Bobby had reached 2231. And you'll note he has the National Master title. Hurst with E4. And who can guess what Bobby played here? You got it. The Sicilian defense, C5. Knight F3, D6, D4, pawn takes pawn. And we have an open Sicilian with knight takes D4 here. Knight F6, Knight C3. And I think we all know what's coming next. And if you don't, then you have not been watching this program very often. That's right, ladles and jelly spoons, A6. Miguel Nidorf's variation. Elliot with the Amsterdam variation. One of my favorite responses, pawn to F4. E5, knight back to F3, queen C7, bishop D3, and queen's knight to D7. White castles his king behind his pawns, and he'll want to get to the corner very quickly. As with all F4 type of openings, you want to vacate this open diagonal so that your king is not susceptible to attack. That's true whether you're playing white or black, by the way. It's just the other diagonal for black. When you're playing an F-pawn opening, get your king into the corner. Bobby with b5, pawn a3 to prevent b4. More common here is the move you've seen me play many, 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 many times. Queen to e1, looking to play either to g3 or h4. That move is answered by bishop b7 and then the aforementioned king h1. g6, a3, bishop g7, queen h4. And kingside castles is the most common line. Going back, Elliot Hurst played a3 right away, which is the second most common move. Bishop b7, and you can also play bishop e7 and get castled. Definitely should be considered. King h1. Very sensible and principled move. I don't know if knight h4 is playable. It might be a bit premature. It does get an inaccuracy. King h1, g6. And another move I've seen here is knight c5. Should also be okay. Yeah, it gets a check mark. And g6, bishop e3, knight g4. In spite of this pressure, white has an edge. He's got a development advantage and is overall slightly, very so slightly, a splinter better. Bishop back to d2, bishop to g7, pawn to f5, very thematic in these kinds of openings. The knight returns to f6 and the white knight to g5. Now it might be stronger to open this file and trade off the pawn. Uh, the bot calling for the thematic queen e1. That's another move. These are all moves that I've played before from the white side. I like getting this f-file open, especially when black hasn't castled yet. 
The one drawback is because he hasn't castled yet, he can open the H file and glare menacingly at my king. But here I'd probably play the knight g5 now, and I'd get a star. Elliot with the knight g5 right away, and that's answered by a kickback, baby. Get out of my face. Knight h3, pawn g5, and knight c5 here was my preference as well. Knight f2, now knight c5. <laughs> now it's marked inaccurate. B4 hits the knight, and that knight trades itself off for this bishop. Not so desirable in my mind because that's a bad bishop, and you're giving up a good knight for a bad bishop. But the position is so closed as well that it really, if he takes with the C man, it's really hard to bust that um, pawn chain. And he does take with the C man. So now we're going to have to focus on the d5 square. We need to find a way to break up this pawn chain, and the way to do it is with the d-man. Uh, so Bobby played queen d7 to give some support. We've got ample support aiming at the d5 square now. Queen e2, rook c8, getting on the open file. Very principled chess going on here for both players. Pawn a4. And this is the first real critical question mark that Elliot Hurst gets. The bot saying, hey, you need to counter Black's rook with your own. And I definitely agree with that assessment. Bobby Castles, pawn takes pawn, and pawn takes the pawn. Now Elliot with rook a5. That gets a question mark. I don't know if he's planning on coming over here. It, it's hard to see what this rook can do. The bot calling for pawn to h4. Uh, that would be a hard move for me to play. I might be tempted to try knight g4 here. Let's see what the bot thinks of this. I mean, it, it's worth a try, right? Oh, it's inaccurate. Oh, it changed its mind. It's a, it's a check mark. And yeah, knight takes knight, queen takes knight. But now the bot says, okay, lift the rook, but bring it up to pin the bishop. Anyway, rook a5 was played. Pawn d5, as expected, basically says, go ahead and take my pawn. I couldn't care less. Elliot does not take that pawn. He takes the d-man. And knight takes d5. And knight takes the knight. Yeah, knight c e4 is definitely much more appealing, isn't it? In fact, gets an x clam. Knight takes knight was the choice. Queen takes knight. That battery attacks the magic square, threatening checkmate. That diagonal is obstructed by knight e4. And king's rook to d8, battery attacking the d-man. Bishop e1. Was not expecting bishop e1. Huh. Rook a7 tethers the queen to the bishop. You can't take this pawn without losing your bishop after a trade. Interesting. Bishop e1. I'm not sure what Elliot's going for with bishop e1. Bobby goes ahead and captures the pawn, which can't be bad. But I'm looking at rook c1. Now that this bishop is obstructing the first rank, you know, rook c1, rook a3, queen d4. Let's see what the bot gives me. Ah, I get an exclam. And yes, he can defend that pawn, but that's okay. I will play queen d4 here and get an exclam. Doing pretty good with the bot today. I've only had a couple of inaccuracies. Bobby takes and is given a question mark. It's hard to see that as a question mark. I mean, look at the eval bar, 0.4 here, 0.5 compared to 0.6. <laughs> okay, I don't think one-tenth of a pawn is worth a full question mark, do you? I don't even think it's worth an inaccuracy. Okay, if you don't want to give me a star, fine, but how could that be a question mark?
you're picking up a pawn. And as Yasser Sirawan would say, a pawn is a pawn. Speaking of Sirawan, when I was growing up, my dad asked me, who's your favorite American grandmaster, Bobby Fischer? And I said, no, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Elliot with queen takes queen, rook takes queen, and now knight c5, hitting the rook. You don't want to take this. It would be a mistake to play rook takes the knight. You're not compensated well enough to take this knight and give up the exchange. The eval bar swinging back in favor. Okay, if I play here to defend my pawn, he can play here. And my bishop is really out of play. I'd have to come here. And he can harass me quite a bit. Bobby, on the other hand, plays rook d1 here, and I like this move. The bot does not. The eval bar likes the move just fine, but the annotator doesn't. That would be a hard move to play, pawn to e5, uh, e4 there. Now, you may wonder, why can't I just take this bishop? Well, he did take the bishop. But the point now is black can double his rooks on the first rank. And I'm picking the bishop back up. Meanwhile, white is also in a back rank weakness. So really, black is up to no good here. He has to give the material back and get out of the back rank weakness. And for that reason, king g1. Wow, he gets a double x glam for that. So rook takes the bishop. Rook takes the rook. Rook takes the rook check. King f2. And that brings us to... A rook bishop against rook knight endgame. White has reason to be hopeful. This pawn is indefensible. And you got to make your rook safe. So rook e4 was played. And rook takes the pawn. And white now has a passed pawn that's further away from the black king than white's passed pawn is from the white king. Now you may wonder, can I just win this pawn here with a fork? It's not going to be your best option. This pawn is the, the deadly one. So as you can see, that pawn can come under super attack with bishop f8. Two attackers, one defender. Overpower! Now, first played knight to c5, obstructing the super attack. I thought white should play, should bring his king more into the game. King f3. What do I get for king f3? Really just force the issue here. It's an inaccuracy. I mean, my point is, if black gives check, the king can come more toward the center. You can see the eval bar is middle of the, middle of the meter there. Knight c5. Oh, yeah, because I can just take the pawn. And he does. Double exclam, ladles and jelly spoons. The point being very obvious. If you take my rook, I fork, and that's going to be that. He didn't take the rook. He played rook a5. Ah, so, so Fisher-esque. That was, that's gorgeous. You didn't stop me from taking the pawn at all. You facilitated it even more. Ha, ha, ha. Great move by Bobby Fischer. So rook a5, bishop takes the knight, rook takes the bishop, and suddenly black is up a pawn, and it's a passed pawn. Rook f4 check, king e3. Apparently king e2 is the better way to keep fighting. And now black is up two pawns. G4, bot wanting G3. Uh, does the simple rook C4 work? Gets an inaccuracy. Oh, yeah, king E4 wins back a pawn, doesn't it? Because it attacks the rook. I've got to move my rook to safety, and then you can take the pawn, even though you're giving up a pawn. Yeah, this is, uh, this is looking bad for white either way. G4 was played. Rook f4, pawn h3, pawn e4. 
Rook c4, Rook f3 check. King takes the pawn. Rook takes the h-man. And black is clearly winning the game. King e5, Rook e3 check. King f6. He's hoping to come in here somehow, it looks like. Rook f3 check. King e5, King g7. King d5, King g6. Weaker is rook f4. I know normally you want to trade when you're ahead, but it doesn't work here because after rook takes and pawn takes, your split pawns can be stopped very easily. And that, my friends, would result in a draw. That's an equal, surely equal position. In fact, the eval bar is dead center and the uh, annotator has it at 0, 0.00. So, uh, Twizzler, if you're watching, don't make that trade. <laughs> King g6, rook c1, rook f4, rook g1, pawn f5, pawn takes pawn, king takes the pawn. Rook h1. King g6, it's just a matter of time and technique at this juncture. King e5, pawn h5, rook d1, pawn h4. And yeah, that pawn is rolling. I'm going to play to h3 and get my rook behind. Rook g1, king h5, getting out of the rook's line of fire. Rook h1, rook f8. Rook d1, pawn h3, king e4, king h4, rook d7, trying to get behind, rook f1, rook d2, pawn g4, rook d8, pawn h2, Elliot Hurst resigned the game. You know, it, he can play this check, but once the king gets on g3, he's impervious to checks, and there's no way to prevent the pawn from promoting without giving up your rook. Let's run it through the analysis bot. Elliot with 88.6 accuracy. Bobby Fisher with 941 the performance rating, Elliot Hurst had a performance rating of 2,500. Bobby Fisher with a performance rating of 2,750. Wow. He had an X-Glam opening, an X-Glam middle game, and a double X-Glam end game.